Hello all, welcome all to this continuing session from yesterday, the second part from the head and neck. So, high level MCQs on the head and neck part 2 on an academy YouTube live. My name is Dr. Angit Khandelwal, MBBS and MS and anatomy, your anatomy educator. Let's start the session. Few things before we go ahead, this is the weekly calendar for the test series. You can use the code, the code is Dr. Ankit live. That code you can use wherever you want to use. You can get discounts also in various subscriptions. Then we have this an academy light feature, Prof 1 batch has started. This is the auto daily practice papers. After every plus class, we conduct uh, some MCQs related to that particular topic. Then we have this known as the doubt clarification batch just started, special class feature. Special class, uh, we are having alternate days. Today also at 4.15 p.m., 4.30 p.m. to be precise, we discuss the topic of cranial vertebral joints. The Atlanto occipital, the Atlanto axial joints. You can have a look at that. You can find that in the special class features, which happened yesterday. Next, we have this all educated revision batch, foundation one batch, MBS prof one. This is the schemes going on, and uh, you can get these offers. Finally, we have the three subscriptions, and let's start the ses session now. <clears throat> okay, so let's start the session. Continuing from yesterday. Yesterday we did around 10, 15, around 12, 13 MCQs, I guess. We'll continue from there only, and uh, we'll continue today also. Let's see how many. MCQs you can discuss. That is the first MCQ for the day. The question says that a 15 year old boy is eating a fish dinner, dinner having fish and inadvertently has a bone caught in his throat. He complains of significant pain above the vocal cords, above the vocal cords. Which of the following nerves is responsible for carrying the pain sensation for this pain or sensation for the pain? Above the vocal cords. So options are superior laryngeal nerve, or recurrent laryngeal nerve, spinal accessory nerve or the hypoglossal nerve. Which nerve will be carrying the pain? Your options A, B, C, D in the comment box. You can write that option if you wish to. You can take a small gap of say 5 seconds and then we can discuss it further on. So there is uh, pain above the vocal cord. So what is the sensory supply of the larynx above the vocal cord is what they are asking. So let us assume over here a coronal section with the vocal cords over here and going below this. So if you talk about the sensory sensation, Above the vocal cord, there is a different nerve. Below the vocal cord, the nerve is different. So above the vocal cord and below the vocal cord, nerves are different. Below, we have the nerve known as the recurrent laryngeal nerve. But what is the nerve which is carrying sensations from above the vocal cord? Let us see your uh, D's and A's. A's, A's. Okay. Most of you going with superior laryngeal nerve. So what happens, see, on the sides, we have this vagus nerve which is coming down, both the sides, right? It gives off a superior laryngeal nerve over here and a recurrent laryngeal nerve from below. The superior laryngeal nerve divides into internal which goes inside and an external laryngeal nerve. There is an internal nerve and there is an external laryngeal nerve. The internal, the name is saying going inside, internal. It pierces the thyroid membrane and then it goes inside. Therefore, this is the correct answer. But internal is not the option. So, the best option is superior because internal is a branch of superior laryngeal nerve. While below the vocal cords, the sensory sensations are taken up by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So recurrent laryngeal nerve below the vocal cord and above the vocal cord is internal laryngeal nerve. While most of the muscles or nearly all of the muscles of the larynx are supplied by this recurrent laryngeal nerve only. Majority of the muscles of the larynx are motor or having the motor supply by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Okay, I hope the point is clear. Spinal accessory nerve, it supplies the trapezius and the sternocleidomastoid. The hypoglossal nerve is supplying basically the tongue muscles, the tongue muscles, all the glosses except the palatoglosses. I hope the point is clear with this question. Let's see the next one. Next question related to larynx only, but <clears throat> the question is slightly different. That which of the following muscles is most important to allow to allow air movement through the larynx? To allow air movement through the larynx, which muscle is there? Options are posterior cricoarytenoids, lateral cricoarytenoids. Cricothyroids or infrahyoid muscles. Let us see what you guys think about it. What's the correct answer? Let me move over here and then you can supposedly answer. Which allows air movement. So you can understand what they are trying to say is once you do a laryngoscopy, you see a vestibular or a false vocal cord above. But below this, you see the white pearly cords, which are the vocal cords. And if you're seeing a laryngoscopy and you ask the patient to say something or any voice, normal respiration, these are vibrating. These two vocal cords which are present below and medially are the ones that are vibrating. So obviously along their movement is when they go medially, they will, when they are in close approximation, obviously the air will pass less. 
and once they are separated the air will pass more so basically indirectly they are asking dcb okay dcb all of you are going with options indirectly they are asking that which of the following muscles of the larynx can make the vocal cords away from each other that is which muscle is the abductor of vocal cord abductor abductor of vocal cord and the only the lone the sole the only abductor of the vocal cord is posterior cricoarytenoid pca remember this forever so answer for this question is option number a pca posterior cricoarytenoid is the only abductor or safety muscle of larynx what is allowing air to pass through it right i hope the point is clear no problem now is equation they can ask you tomorrow it's supplied by which nerve remember we just discussed recurrent laryngeal nerve cricothyroid is the only muscle of larynx which is not supplied by the by the recurrent laryngeal nerve it is supplied by the external laryngeal nerve which muscle cricothyroid over here answer in this question is a but just we are discussing the other options what all what all questions can be formed from them so cricothyroid by external laryngeal nerve pc is the sole abductor by recurrent laryngeal nerve let's see another question here it comes the question says that regarding regarding topics has changed regarding the dural venous sinuses which of the following pairs is matched incorrectly in capital letters written incorrectly the topic is dural venous sinuses options are option a says superior sagittal sinus arachnoid granulations option b transverse sinus is sphenoid bone option c inferior sagittal sinus free margin of fox cerebri now option d is sigmoid sinus jugular foramen last option there is one more option cavernous sinus middle cranial fossa these are the options over here let us see what you guys think what is matched incorrectly so four of them are right what is the odd one out which is the odd one out we have to find out so what do you think guys a b c d e <clears throat> okay hurry and dental cues are going with the other options think 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 which is matched incorrectly let us go option wise let us go option wise option a superior sagittal sinus now understand that there is a big structure which is known as the fox cerebri it's a dural fold goes on anterior to posterior it's a big structure known as fox cerebri it's a midline midline structure right cerebral hemisphere on the other side left on this side dural fold at the upper margin you have the superior sagittal sinus at the lower margin you have the inferior sagittal sinus the direction of blood venous blood it is actually the venous blood is this this is front side anterior that is back side posterior clear superior sagittal sinus superior sagittal sinus arachnoid granulations So obviously it has the arachnoid granulations is related to this so that the subarachnoid from the subarachnoid spaces the CSF can be absorbed into the superior sagittal sinus so option A is correct the main site of CSF absorption is the arachnoid granulations at the superior sagittal sinus option number B transverse sinus sphenoid bones i guess most of you going with option B some are going with option C also let us see transverse sinus sphenoid bone now where is transverse sinus but this was the superior sagittal sinus in midline it meets over here this point is the confluence of the sinuses it is right inside the external occipital protuberance if you can feel it from here this is the external occipital protuberance right over here so just inside we have the confluence of sinuses from here the two sinuses which diverge on both the sides are transverse sinus okay so which bone is this where is the external occipital protuberance the name itself is saying occipital so occipital they are saying where is sphenoid bone a sphenoid bone is a bone which is mainly present in the middle cranial fossa its center part has a body then you have the long great wings greater wing and a small lesser wings so basically this sphenoid bone is found in the middle cranial fossa not the one uh, lying the transverse sinus so transverse sinus is found in the occipital bone not that this is incorrect so that is the answer but we will see other options also option c says inferior sagittal sinus free margin of fox cerebri we have seen that this was the fox cerebri this is the free margin this is the free margin in free margin you have the inferior sagittal sinus so that is perfectly fine sigmoid sinus jugular foramen now see what happens from here the two transverse sinuses will go inside the skull obviously not outside and they reach at the boundaries of the occipital and the can say the parietals and then from here there is a sigmoid sinus 
sigmoid why we call it a sigmoid because it is sigmoid in shape it is like this it is going down like this just behind the mastoid ear cells so it is a good relation with the ear middle ear remember when we talk of the walls of the middle ear the posterior relation of the middle ear is a sigmoid sinus and sigmoid sinus thrombosis is one of the complications with the mastoiditis or any you know csom having the later on or chronic complications can have thrombus in the sigmoid sinus as well as transverse sinus because it is continuation of the transverse sinus on both the side so sigmoid sinus if it goes down it goes to a foramen known as the jugular foramen why because this sigmoid sinus is the one which continues as the internal jugular vein so this is the jugular foramen and this sinoid sinus continues as the internal jugular vein so this is perfectly fine last option cavernous sinus middle canal fossa we just said we just said that the sphenoid bone is there in the middle canal fossa now this is the body of the sphenoid these are big big greater wings on both the sides the greater wings on both the sides and these are the smaller lesser wings anterior middle and posterior cranial fossa cavernous sinuses are located right over here okay cella tarsica pituitary gland over the diaphragm cellae on the sides cavernous sinus so cavernous sinus location is right there in the middle cranial fossa absolutely correct the answer is option number b i hope the point is clear to all of you any confusion let me know but answer for this question is option number b second option let us see the next question next question says a 26 year old man comes to the physician for a follow up examination <clears throat> two weeks ago he was treated in the emergency for head trauma after being hit by a bicycle while crossing the street okay neurological examination shows a decreased taste on the right anterior tongue this patient condition is most likely caused by damage or i guess we have done this question yesterday no sort of repeat question but still neurological examination shows a decreased taste on the right anterior tongue that which nerve is this which nerve is this cauda tympani nerve what is branch of seventh nerve right now this condition is caused by damage to cranial nerve that is responsible for which of the following so which over here which over here so is uvula movement facial sensation so which of these is also supplied by the facial nerve that is actually the question so <clears throat> uvula movement is the pharynx soft palate movement facial sensation eyelid guess eyelid closure is what we discussed yesterday also no eyelid closure eyelid closure orbicularis oculi facial muscle so we are not going to discuss it in detail we have discussed yesterday right let's see the next one over here okay just a second just a second okay right fine so yes some questions are repeated over here so don't worry we'll continue this session with some of the new questions these are the three four questions only but we will continue the session tomorrow and we will continue from here just three four questions over here so don't worry we'll continue it more okay so that's all for the time being guys and uh, more questions and excuse you, you will get a notification tomorrow we'll continue it tomorrow okay that's all for the time being having a small short session any doubts you can write in the comment box or the telegram group thank you